Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2017. We're here on the news page and as you can see right in front of us, the United Kingdom will be leaving the EU at the end of the season. So we're leaving the EU and the rules now mean that we get 17 foreign players, which is any country, any nationality. So all of those Ivorians and South Africans and players like that that I've signed that don't have work permits now no longer need them. I can only have 17 in my 25-man squad, but most of them are like 12 years old anyway, so they don't even need to be registered. So I'm allowed to have all of those players now registered. Anyone who is currently from the EU, who is currently in my squad, so players like, I don't know, Hugo Malo, Spanish guy, he will now become an honorary Brit, I guess. So he's allowed to be part of the squad, but isn't considered a foreigner, which is amazing. I think that's actually a very, very good deal. And now because of this, I've kind of gone on a scouting binge of lots and lots of countries to try and fill up my uh, team with players. And I have confirmed a transfer. Timui, is that how it's spelled? Timui Bakayoko. He is joining me at the end of the season. Not now, at the end of the season. Six and a half million pound I'm paying for him. He's 24. He's not getting any games for Chelsea. I didn't want to sign him now because of the whole financial fair play mess that I'm currently in. And I don't really need him at the moment. So, Bakayoko is coming in next year. On the subject of transfers, I've realised, and I say realised as if it's like this new new thing that I've just discovered. I buy way too many centre-backs. So there we've got Papadopoulos, Big West, Tonelli, Caldara, Sula, Bracamontes. All very, very good Premiership standard centre-backs. I've also bought some more coming in. Obviously, German Storico, who I announced last episode, episode before, someone, he's coming in. And Freddy Cerner, who I don't think I have mentioned before. I'm signing this guy as well for like a million pounds. That is six very good centre-backs. Six? Eight. Jesus, eight centre-backs. I don't need eight centre-backs. So because of that, I've loan-listed Papadopoulos... I'm tempted to try and sell Papadopoulos. He, he's a very good player, but he's played seven games for me. And that's it. Seven games is not enough games. And while we're talking about defenders, Hugo Malo, he's just come and had a conversation with me about wanting to leave to sign for Real Madrid. Uh, Real Madrid and PSG are interested in Malo. Because of the whole leaving the EU thing, I'm actually tempted to get rid of him because Ali Tape can play. And I've wanted to play Ali Tape for about two years. And another thing, I mentioned that I wanted to get rid of whatever my assistant manager's name was. And he has gone. I have hired Michael Reisiger because he's actually very good. And he used to play for Middlesbrough. Yes, admittedly, it was like six months to a year. So he knows the English game a little bit. Former Barcelona, former AC Milan, former Ajax, former a whole load of players, load of clubs even. So he's been around, he's a decent assistant manager. Can he speak English? I didn't check that one. He can speak basic English. Well, let's send you on a language course then, Michael. I feel like you might need it. That's enough of random admin nonsense that I always seem to do at the start of episodes because I feel like you need to know. You need to know what's going on. Obviously the EU thing is pretty major um, and me buying lots of defenders is a pain in the ass. Since we have last met, there has been four games, two defeats, two defeats, two wins even, and two draws. First up was a 4-1 victory against local-ish rivals Bournemouth. Mandzukic, Big Wes, and Manolo Gabbiadini gets on the score sheet twice. Yes, one of them was a penalty, but he actually scored some goals. Then a trip to Italy in the Champions League where we managed to scrape a draw. Wasn't the best result. It wasn't the worst result. We got a draw. So we are still undefeated in our Champions League group, which is absolutely ridiculous. Mandzukic with the goal there. And then Man City came down to us. And we managed to get a point here as well. Sergio Aguero scores the equaliser for Man City. So we actually went one lot very early on. At which point I panicked and went, do I go counter? Or do I go contain? Do I go really defensive? I didn't. I stuck with my guns. It was a bad idea. I didn't do any subs either because I kind of forgot. We got a point. A point is better than nothing. A win would have been nice, but it's a point against Man City. And then the final game, a 1-0 a victory against Newcastle at St. James's Park. Manolo Gabbiadini with the goal just after half-time. 
it was a good win. It's Newcastle. It's never an easy place to go to. And that victory puts us at sixth in the table, which is a much, much better looking table now compared to a couple of weeks ago. Today, we are going to invite the mighty Barcelona to our tiny, tiny St. Mary's Stadium. We're also going to baby play Hull. So yes, as I said at the end of the last episode, we are going to do Barcelona. Depending on the outcome of this, if we have qualified, I will not show you the Basel game. If we haven't qualified, I will show you the Basel game. Let's get into the Barcelona game and let's see how well we do, shall we? A bit of a rotated side slightly because there's a lot of people who are um, slightly unfit. So players like Tierney really should not be starting. Lamina is on 84% fitness. Um, obviously, you can see there most of my back four not at 100%. Actually, only one player at 100%, and that's because he doesn't normally play. So let's run through the lineup. Coadio Kone in goal, Malo, Caldara, Bigwes, and Tierney at the back. Caldara's playing in front of Bracamontes because Caldara, he needs some games. He's a decent player, and I'm just not giving him any games because Bracamontes is much better. Midfield, Linetti, Rabio, and Delaney. Kravinovic, just behind the strikers, Gabidini and Sam Gallagher. Hold on, no. Dennis Pratt. Dennis Pratt behind the strikers. Kravinovic, you get on the bench. I've gone with Sam Gallagher because he seems to love these big games. At times when I need goals, all three of Sam Gallagher's goals have been important. So, I'm giving him a start against Barcelona. I wanted to start him against them last time. Mandzukic is on the bench. Although Mandzukic is on fire. Ah, that's only Barcelona. Barcelona are a good side, and I think they have enough quality to see off the challenge of Southampton today. Well, yeah, you're, you're right, we are. Looking at the table, then, if we win, we do actually go through. If we get a point and Roma lose to Basel, we go through. I think, actually, if Roma lose to Basel and we also lose, we go through. So, Basel... Could you do us a favour and beat Roma? And then you you might get Europa League. So Barcelona have gone for a slightly different lineup because last time you had Suarez on the right and Messi as the striker. Today, they've got Messi on the right and Suarez as the striker. It's still absolutely petrifying. Always close down Kingsley Coman. May as, well, may as well do hard tackling on him as well, sure. Calmly say, come on lads, we can potentially qualify for the knockout rounds here. I wasn't expecting that result. I was expecting a lot more, like, panicked of, shut up. This is Barcelona. We should be lucky to even play them, let alone get a point. Now, being at home, this should be something that it should be in our favour. Good good foul by Hugo Malo there, getting ready for his Real Madrid days. Free kick for Messi. Kingsley Coman now. Kone with the save. It's going to be a corner. There's not even a minute on the clock. There is now. Messi takes the corner. Rabio gets it clear. Back to Messi, though. Messi is crossed it to Tellez. Okay, fine. Just end there. Dennis Pratt with a corner. It's hit the bar. Did Caldara hit the bar? I think Caldara hit the bar. Another corner. Dennis Pratt. It's Ter Stegen grabs it. That's probably going to end the highlight. Free kick for Gabbiadini. Goal for Gabbiadini. That's what he does. We are 1-0 up against Barcelona. 16 and a half minutes on the clock. Gabbiadini, when it loads, will take this free kick and put it right in that top corner. Ter Stegen has absolutely no chance. That is postage stamp. Mascarano with a throw on. Messi. Big Wes intercepts Linet Linetti. Rabio. Tierney. The te to Dennis Pratt. Sam Gallagher. Go on, Sam. Gallagher to Gabbiadini. Gabbiadini, he's hit the post and Ter Stegen gets it, saves it and Peek gets it off for a throw on. Interesting development. Basel. Oh, no. Basel were beating Roma, and then they've just equalised. Throw on, Hugo Malo. That was a terrible throw on. Luis Suarez now coming forward for Barcelona. He's taken on about 16 players, but Big Wes stops him. Mascarano got a bit of space. He finds Messi. Why did Tierney leave Lionel Messi? And Suarez hits it just wide. Still 1-0. We're approaching half-time. And we are at half-time. It said Southampton deservedly lead at the break, which is good. I... No, I'm happy. Keep it going. Just keep keep going. Because the way other results are going here, you can see by the, the group table, Barcelona might drop out into the Europa League, which would be amazing. Corner. Dennis Pratt takes it. Sam Gallagher's at the back post. Doesn't get there. Rabiot gets there ahead of them. Titi. Rabiot to back, back to Malo. Malo to Linetti. To Dennis Pratt. Delaney's got a lot of space. He's not going to use it. He's found Tierney. 
Kieran Tierney, Dennis Pratt, Linetti, the ball's going all over the place. Sam Gallagher's hit it just wide. Kingsley Coman with a throw. Suarez. Luis Suarez is in there as well. Why does Dennis Suarez not have a D, but Luis Suarez has an L? I don't know. Big Wes gets the ball from Tierney. Big Wes lumps it up the pitch. Mascarano intercepts Sergio now. Rakitic, Suarez, L. Suarez, Kingsley Coman hits it just wide. 53, 54 minutes played. Still 1-0 up. And Kieran Tierney has just injured Lionel Messi, who's now gone off the pitch. That's amazing. Good job, Kieran. 70 minutes played. Hold on, let's cancel that. Let's go, let's go normal view. It's time. We, I can't throw this away. We're going, Bracamontes is coming on. We're going five at the back. We're going to change it to defensive for now. This might be the dullest, like, 20 minutes of football, but I don't care. Corner for Barcelona. Tellez. Rabio gets it clear, but because we don't have Dennis Pratt there, or anyone there, really, they're going to get it back. Tellez. Kingsley Coman. Tellez gets it back. Crosses it. Vasquez, it's gone in. Oh, damn. Damn and blast. Coman back to Tellez. Tellez crosses it in, and there's a lot of Barcelona players there, and Vasquez... Coadio Cone. Coadio Cone, what are you doing? Corner, Rakitic, this is not good. Kone grabs the ball. There is five minutes to go. I don't want to lose this game. We're already playing defensively. Gabbiadini. Hugo Malo now. Are we going to come forward or is this going to be a Barcelona attack? Linetti. Linetti. Oh no, it's a Barcelona attack. Coman. Kingsley Coman. He's had a long shot and Kone manages to pluck it out of the air. 86 minutes on the clock. That is it. It is full time. We have got another point against Barcelona. We probably should have won that game. Let's calmly. I'm, I'm happy. I am happy. You've got a point against Barcelona. I can't be angry. Michael Reisinger, however, says, tell the team their performance was disappointing. No, no, it wasn't. With that result, you can see here, Group G, we still sit top of the group. Now, because we still have to play Basel, I don't think we can drop any lower because Barcelona, if they win, they move above us. If we lose, we sit on nine points. They, they finish on 12. Fine. Barcelona, Roma, if they draw, Barcelona get 10 points. Roma get nine, but my goal difference is better. If Roma win, Roma go on 12 points, no, 10, 11, 11 points, that one. And we stay on nine points. Our goal difference is better than Barcelona's, so we still go through. So... On that logic, I'm not going to show you the Basel game. I'm going to show you the whole game. We've just moved into December and Manolo Gabbiadini has one player of the month somehow. And Kieran Tierney and Coadio Kone, second and third place, young player of the month. I think Kone also got third player of the month last month as well. Ah, and I get second place manager of the month. Even better. The board have revealed that they project the club to pass financial fair play regulations. I think you're lying, unless you're talking about that one. Because that one we're fine. This one, not so much. Let's get on to the whole game then. They are currently sat 19th place with half the amount of points that we've got. In fact, they are, they've got half the wins, half the draws, and double the defeats. Awesome. The lineup for Southampton vs Hull is as follows. Coadio Kone, as usual, in goal. Malo, Caldara, Bigwes and Bracamontes comes in at left back because Kieran Tierney needs a rest. And Jake Vokins also needs a rest for some reason. I think he's playing for the under-23s, which I don't really want him to be doing at the moment. Midfield, Delaney, Lamina and Rabio. Dennis Pratt as the advanced playmaker. Dembele and Mandzukic are the strike force for today. Man Mark, Morales and Hernandez... That should be good. Michael Reisiger thinks we should win, so let's not let them down. Okay, I agree. I, well, that's probably not what he wanted to say. Without any problem at all. That's not let's not let them down. A win here by two goals, three goals, would put us into fourth place. I know it's only 13 games in. Man City do have a game in hand as well, but fourth place at Christmas, that's pretty good. It's not Christmas, it's like the 2nd of December. Corner, Dennis Pratt to take it. Zuccellini gets it clear only as far as Delaney. Delaney's got a bit of time and space. Finds Big Wes. Big Wes back to Delaney. Delaney never wants to shoot. I always want him to shoot, but he never does. Dennis Pratt, Delaney again. Lamina. Hugo Mallo. Mallow's taken it down the wing. Mallow's crossed it in. It's gone in. Hugo Mallow has scored 
A complete fluke. Okay, it's gone down as an own goal. Not sure that's an own goal somehow. So Mallow takes it to the edge of the penalty area. He does this a lot. And the balls come in. And if anything, I'd say that goal should be disallowed because Dembele was miles offside. The only thing that happened in the half was the questionable goal. Um, I'm going to get angry. You're not very good. You're destroying them in terms of possession and all that jazz. You're destroying them. But in terms of actually doing something with it, you're not doing very well. Is it because it's Moussa Dembele? Is he the problem? He's often the problem. 66 minutes played. No highlights. Gallagher's coming on. Gabudini's coming on. And Kravinovic? Sure. Triple substitution. Why not? Delaney to Lamina. We finally got a highlight. Literally, second highlight of the entire game. 78th minute. Sam Gallagher has scored the goal. 2-0 now. That Does that put us to fourth? It doesn't, because I think, yeah, Man City, you've got better results against us. But it's 2-0... Bracamontes, makeshift left back, plays the ball through, Gallagher, Munez doesn't quite get it clear, Gallagher gets there first, puts it in the bottom, 2-0. A third goal would be lovely, if we can get something from this I'll be very happy, Big Wes, Rabio, Thomas Delaney, Kravinovic, Rabio again, Hugo Mallo, bit of space to run into, he does love running into that space, he's taken on one man, passes it to Rabio in the middle, to Lamina, to Mallow again. Mallow, oh, he wanted to run. You could tell he wanted to run. Zuccolini's gone through the back of Rabio, but gets the ball. Are Hull going to actually do a counter-attack now? Evandro. Zuccolini. Stewart. Jo Joao. Moreno. Moreno has put it in the bottom corner. That's their, They've had one shot on target out of all three they've had. And they've put it in. Ball over the top, Moreno runs onto it. One touch control, straight in the bottom corner. It goes through Coadio Kone's hands. It's 2-1. Don't throw this away now. Kravinovic with the corner. Gabidini flicks on and Caldara makes it 3-1. His first goal of the season, his first ever goal for Southampton as well because he didn't really play too many last year. Gabidini's flick on. Caldara rises above all the defenders. Straight in the back of the net. 3-1, five minutes to go. Highlight straight away. Don't do anything, Hull. Please do... What This always seems to happen. Bracamontes. Go on, Bracamontes. Come forward. Kravinovic gets hit in the back of the face, I assume. Kravinovic kicks it into Evandro. We can't actually get the ball forward. Bracamontes. Bracamontes has been tackled by Zuccellini. Morales now. Evandro. Is it Zuccellini or Zuccellini? I'm saying Zuccia, as if there's an H in the middle of it. Moreno is through on goal... He's hit it just over. That could have been his second of the game. That's four shots. Still only one goal for them, though. Bracamontes with the throw on. It's actually going to be full time. Unless Kravinovic can have a shot. He does have a shot. Marshall with a save. It's going to end 3-1. We are going to move up to fifth in the table. But that's because no one else has played. Assertively, we got away with that. I can kind of understand why like, you were demotivated. But I would have imagined everyone would have been. Because we didn't get away with that. We like actually battered them. But sure. I've gone forward a couple of days just so we get the Sunday games out of the way. And we're still fifth because Stoke beat Chelsea 2-0. Bournemouth also drew 3-0 with Leicester. So Leicester don't really climb any further in the table. Man City drew 0-0 with Newcastle. So we are actually in, in a good position. We're one point behind third place. We're a little bit, well, seven points behind second, nine points behind first. But, if we can qualify for the Champions League legit, I would be very, very happy. Next episode is going to be a Premier League special. And I think we're going to do either side of Christmas. I think we're going to do West Ham and Arsenal, a London, London double, a London special, both at St Mary's. Um, so I'm going to play Basel, Leicester, Wolves, hopefully, unless my math is, maths is terrible. Um... We're through in the Champions League anyway, so that's irrelevant. We'll come back for West Ham Arsenal. And then we'll have the start of the transfer window as well soon. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Football Manager. If you did enjoy, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like, if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button and I will see you for West Ham and Arsenal.